The Department of Justice and Education issued guidance on Title IX of the Education Amendments Act of 1972. Title IX, as most people know, is designed to help women and girls have full access to education to protect them from sexual harassment in particular. The Department of Education is now saying that those protections against sex discrimination now cover gender identity. And this has dramatic implications with regard to things like bathroom, shower, and locker room access, dorm access, among a host of other issues. The Department of Education is now saying that transgender people have full unfettered rights to these locker rooms and showers of their choice based on their subjective gender identities. This guidance applies through the K through 12 through university levels, which means boys will be given access to the girls' showers and locker rooms at K through 12, and biological men being given access to women's showers and locker rooms at the university level. Many school districts around the country are saying that this guidance is merely guidance and does not have to be followed, and other states have sued, in fact, to overturn the guidance. That's saying that this is overreached by the executive, that our federal funding of our schools cannot be put at risk merely because we have agency guidance coming out. This is a state's issue, that states should be the ultimate arbiters, and this has been federal overreach that has not been endorsed by Congress. Now, transgender students must have their rights protected, their safety protected, their privacy protected, and they have been accommodated with separate facilities. The Department of Education is saying that's not enough, they must be granted full access. The problem with that, however, is that there are people on the other side who feel that their privacy and their safety is put at risk. The guidance from the Department of Education does not require things like a person dress a certain way, a person have a surgery, take hormone therapies, or change their birth certificate. None of those things are required in order to qualify as transgender. People on the side of the guidance issued by the Department of Education say that it is designed to destigmatize transgender people. That transgender people face a lot of problems, they feel uncomfortable, they are dealing with difficult issues that need to be addressed sensitively. Which is absolutely true, it needs to be addressed sensitively. The question is, what is the proper solution? The Department of Education and its supporters say that the proper solution is to treat somebody who identifies as somebody of the opposite sex precisely as a person of the opposite sex in every respect. If they identify as a woman, if they say they're a woman, if it causes them distress not to be affirmed as a woman, then they should be affirmed as a woman by the state, by fellow students in the school context, um, and in public facilities as well. But local school districts in particular have been able to reach sensible compromises where everybody's privacy and safety interests are accommodated with single-sex facilities, with unisex single occupancy facilities that allow transgender students more options, not less. And at the same time, protecting the interests in privacy and safety of non-transgender students. Those interests can be accommodated in a way that does not endanger safety by creating abuse, by not doing violence to existing law by not taking existing precedents and twisting them in a way that they were never designed for.